Please remain standing just for a moment. If you were born in 1968 or afterwards, please be seated. 19, or sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me, before 1968, please be seated. Sorry, before 1968. If you were born before 1968, you may sit down. Those of you who grew up in a family that went to church, if you grew up going to church on Sundays, you may sit down. Okay. So folks, of all of the people here, those who are standing, I invite you to have a little quick look around. These are the people who best represent those who are not at St. Matthew's this morning. Please be seated. These are the folks who, in 15 years, will not be senior citizens. They will be under 65 in 15 years, did not grow up necessarily in a church-going family. Next Saturday, we'll be gathering to engage in some strategic planning about our future. God sees us in 2032. What does God see is the question we're asking. So who are all the people that will be this community? Who are the saints who are not here yet joining our friends who were standing a moment ago? Pretty important question to ask, I think. And as some of us who heard the Dean of Montreal at Rhonda's induction liturgy uh, last uh, Thursday or Tuesday at Church of the Ascension, the message we have for those outside these walls is this, come join us and receive the blessings Jesus has for you. The blessings of being poor, hungry, weeping. The blessings of being hated, excluded, reviled and defamed. Come leap for joy with us. I can't understand why we're not lined up down the block. Our family likes to go to a little spot of land out in the Pontiac uh, from time to time. And on that piece of land, there's a little pond, a little swim hole, that's maybe about as big as the chancel area up here. And on this pond is a rather large canoe. And it's a great joy to see William and Eliza, who are five and seven, out there on their great adventures on that canoe. Mighty explorers on that three or four feet of water. And when they come in after an afternoon, they are so proud of having mastered the art of being a mariner. And they love to show their friends, proudly showing the world that they have conquered. It's quite cute when I suggested to William this summer to maybe go to a canoe camp. He said, Dad, I already know how to canoe. How absurd it would be for him to say, there is no ocean. There is nothing more than me and my pond. I know all there is to know about this life and canoeing and boating. But is that not the absurdity of our own age and what the gospel calls us to see? If we believe that this little pond is all there is, all the stuff we have mastered, well, we've received our consolation, a reward that is fading into dust as is all things in this world. We stay in our grand voyages in a rotting canoe around a pond, never knowing there are those who are planning to journey to Mars and the universes beyond. Well, I think we're here because we make another claim, a claim of another kingdom with milk and honey blessed. And I know not, oh, I know not what joy awaits us there, a radiancy of glory and bliss beyond compare. This, friends, is what we claim 
as Christians, is it not? That we human beings, not just us, all human beings are on a maiden voyage and the suffering, war, and even the joy in this pond of ours are just part of our journey to a glorious future of which we are just babes on the way, a future that is calling us, a communion of saints. And what is this future in which we place our faith and calls us to a way of life, a way claimed in our baptism, a kingdom glimpsed at this table? So what is this Christian thing all about anyway to all those folks who aren't here? How do the majority of people who have never known Christendom or at this moment one or two generations who have never even participated in Christian community, a majority of people who do not have any awareness or really any value of what it is we do here? What is baptism? Why would I do that? Is that not a perfectly reasonable question? Surely, I mean, Sunday is hockey morning, isn't it? A conversation might go something like this. I mean, even if I'm willing to concede that, yes, uh, I can reasonably discern there could be some intelligence out there, a, a transcendent other, call it the G word if you must, but I don't need to acknowledge a religion, do I? I mean, I don't need to pick one. In fact, that's why all there's, there's all this fighting going on out there. I'm spiritual, but not religious. I mean, if this Christian business is about learning to, to some good values, well, our schools have good education programs. In fact, my kids have to put in volunteer hours to graduate. How about the music? It is nice if you like choral music, but there's lots of secular choirs in our neighborhood. In fact, several practice right here in this building. A place for an entertaining talk, a sermon, I think you call it. Well, I prefer science, and if I want story of four, a story of four beasts from the sea and four kings, well, I prefer Netflix. I can watch it any time I want. And social justice? Doing good in the world? Well, hey, I roll up my sleeves, I volunteer, I donate to many secular organizations and agencies, and I volunteer at my own community food bank. And in terms of spirituality, there's lots of opportunities in my neighborhood. I can design my own that fits me, and they don't ask anything of me. I'm busy, after all. So let me get this straight folks. You want me to come here and hang out with you every week, volunteer, give 10% of my hard-earned income so that I can weep and celebrate being poor, hungry, hated, excluded, reviled, and defamed? Isn't that what we say? I wonder if those who went before us those martyrs we remember today who followed this itinerant Jewish preacher to their deaths were faced with the same kinds of questions. You see, as we engage in our thinking about the future, I think we need to get our questions right. Yeah, it's important to look at the financial side. It's important to look at our numbers, to consider how we relate to the folks that are not here, for sure, important. But most of all, our question is, what does it mean to be a Christian today? And what does it mean to be the baptized in 2032? 15 years. What does it mean to belong to the communion of saints? What does it mean to be his body? In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance. In him you also were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. An inheritance. 
an inheritance. Christians make a radical claim that human beings are far more than we can ask or imagine, called to greatness, to immortality. In fact, a claim that death is destroyed and we human beings are heirs of a kingdom, princes and princesses in the royal family of the kingdom of God. And our baptism is not being part of some elite club to lord over other people, but baptism is our assent to the inheritance freely offered to all human beings, heirs of a kingdom that is not of this earth, and rejects the claim that the powers of this world tell us that the fullness of life, that your value is in your little pond by filling your boots with stuff, by your achieved power, esteem, control, and influence. For if that is your claim, friends, woe to you, for you have received your consolation. But what if you assent to what we say in this place? What if you consent and give yourself to the commitments that were made at your baptism? What if your amen at this altar is a holy yes to the glory to which you are called? What if you claim your inheritance as an heir to a mighty kingdom of peace where there is no war, no suffering, where there is no enemy and no hunger, no fear, weeping? And how will you act then as a Christian? What is the nobility of the heirs of such a kingdom? How does such an heir act? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. And do to others as you would have them do to you. For God has put all things under his feet made Christ the head over all things of the church, which is his body. You are his body, the fullness of him who fills all and in all. That's quite a claim, friends. So as you fill in your cards that I hope you've done or are going to do that are at the back of the church today, and as you prepare for the strategic planning event next week, as you come to this table, how will you be his body? the fullness of him who fills all and in all. And how will we lead others that are not here from the pond to the ocean and the universes now in 2032 and beyond? So I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glory inheritance amongst the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. O oh dear and future vision that eager hearts expect, even now by faith we see thee, even here thy walls discern. To thee our hearts are kindled and for thee our spirits yearn.